Could there be a more Alaskan way to fly to Alaska than with Alaska Airlines? Well, keep watching to decide for yourself. To reach the state's rugged interior, it took us eight hours over two flights from the East Coast. In this video, you'll see the highlights from that experience. I'll even rate the whole thing with a Jeb score to help you decide whether this is a journey you'd like to make. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're headed up to Seattle and then on to Fairbanks. Let's see what it's like to fly Alaska to Alaska. This was the first part of our trip traveling to Alaska and then on to Hawaii. Be sure to keep an eye on the channel so you don't miss the rest of this journey. The Wilderness to Waikiki. Our first leg to Seattle left Raleigh at 7.20 in the morning and despite the early hour, the airport was bustling. Well, to be fair, the American Airlines ticket counters were busy. Alaska's single morning flight meant we were through check-in in no time at all, particularly since we were booked into first class. Unfortunately, Raleigh focuses more on keeping the temperature down in their terminal than making it easy to spot airplanes. These lines make it tough to get a good photo. But I guess it does make sense for the airport authority to focus more on their own air conditioning bill than my desire for a picture. Uh, the good news is we've got access to the American Airlines Admirals Club, so we're going to head over there for now before boarding in, uh, in about 40 minutes. Alaska Airlines is the newest member of the One World Alliance, which ties them closer to American Airlines. However, an Alaska first-class ticket does not get you access into the American Airlines Admirals Club. Our first-class tickets only guaranteed us entry into Alaska's own lounges, and we checked out their very best one on our layover in Seattle, so keep watching. Now, we did have a membership here, thanks to a credit card. The club put its best breakfast foot forward with a really nice spread. Frankly, it's better than you might think. It's a great lounge, really um, solid breakfast offerings. I particularly liked the, the hot options, the scrambled uh, egg sort of make your own scramble thing. Uh, that's a nice touch. Um, coffee's good, of course but generally a good, uh, uh, good lounge. We headed back downstairs to grab some to-go snacks. Even though this was a transcontinental flight, the food would be limited. Stand by to learn more about this. Boarding was fast and early. Alaska Airlines is known to board early and this flight was no exception. We started at 6.40 for a 7.20 departure. That's at least 10 minutes earlier than a lot of other US Airlines domestic flights. The seat is pretty typical for a U.S. airline in first class. It's not nearly as nice as the A321 I flew with Alaska last year from Los Angeles to Seattle. By way of comparison, here's a peek back inside that upgraded cabin I experienced last year. It's definitely brighter, fresher, and more modern. Back on board the older 737, our seats were stocked with boxes of water and the nicest smelling sanitizing wipes of any U.S. airline. Gotta love that lavender. When we booked this flight, it was on a smaller 737-800, but had been upgraded to the larger 737-900 with 19 more seats. In first class, we enjoyed a massive 41 inches of pitch. The upgrade paid off for the airline. Despite having more seats to sell, every one of them was filled on this larger airplane. The seats have a nice tray for drinks here. And despite how great that new A321 was, I've always liked Alaska's old bulkhead design, which I'm sorry to say is going away with their redesigned cabins. Each seat is stocked with a brochure explaining what's on offer. Pause to read more. And don't miss your chance to see an ad for their credit card. This box supplies power to the seats. Each seat has power, which is great, particularly on a five-hour flight like this one. First-class passengers can check up to two bags at no additional charge, which was exactly what we'd done. We were grateful because it made boarding and connecting in Seattle that much easier. We have a great flight in store for you today. We do have four of Alaska's very best flight attendants on board. I think you're going to enjoy the great service. Flight time to Seattle once we're airborne, four hours and 52 minutes. Seattle weather, it's a beautiful day, clear skies, temperature in the low 70s right now. And the forecast high is approaching 100 degrees, believe it or not. Thanks for joining us on Alaska Airlines and welcome aboard. 
when the wing walkers appear, you know your trip's about to start. We pushed back and made our way out to the runway. On this first leg to Seattle, we'd cruise at 34,000 feet before climbing as high as 36,000 during a five-hour flight covering nearly 2,900 miles across the country. Here's your reminder that no matter the day's weather on the ground, it's always sunny above the clouds. The tray table folds out from the chair and is medium-sized enough space to work or eat, but not both at the same time, just what you'd expect on a flight like this. Alaska Airlines offers streaming entertainment. It's a robust and free solution to everyone who brings their own device. Generally, however, I prefer having a built-in screen because it enables passengers to use the tray table for eating or working while at the same time watching something on a screen. With Alaska's approach, you're pretty much limited to only being able to do one thing at a time. Oh well, it's certainly a first world problem. Now there are plenty of streaming options. Despite spending a total of 13 hours on board Alaska Airlines flights during this wilderness to Waikiki adventure we're on, I did not run out of good things to watch. There's also a basic map that allows you to keep track of your progress and identify cities and towns below you. Internet access is also available for a fee. I needed to catch up on emails, so I paid $20 to use the service throughout the flight. It was blazing fast, at least for downloads. We made our way over the Appalachian Mountains, where I even saw Burke's Garden, the highest valley in Virginia. Now, that's where my grandparents lived. It's easy to see it from the air thanks to its unusual bowl shape. I also couldn't miss the neighboring town of Tazewell, where my mom lives. I waved, but I couldn't tell whether she saw me. The way the light played with the haze and the clouds and the mountains was just mesmerizing. And sure, these mountains are beautiful, but only a tiny taste of what you'll see on the second leg from Seattle to Fairbanks. Soon, a drink service was provided. I stuck with water. Suzanne opted for some orange juice. We were able to pre-order meals through the Alaska Airlines app, and the flight attendants on both flights seemed genuinely grateful for our pre-ordering. Apparently, it makes things easier for everyone involved. The smoked salmon platter was good. Now, it's not something I'd ordinarily have for breakfast, but it was a great way to get into the mood for Alaska. It was light and filling. Suzanne chose the asparagus frittata, which she said was just okay. Cold eggs anywhere, let alone on a plane, are challenging. Alaska Airlines recently announced the return of hot meals on transcontinental flights and, and flights to Hawaii. Now, last time I checked, Raleigh's on the East Coast and Seattle's on the West Coast. But for some reason, this route has never been considered transcontinental by Alaska and is exempt from this rule. Why do you think Alaska treats this flight differently from other transcon routes? Maybe it's related to catering in Raleigh? Suzanne asked our flight attendant and she shared with her that uh, she also thinks it's strange because she just worked a flight from DCA and there was hot food on that one. Uh, let us know why you think Alaska does this in the comments below. I settled in with beautiful views out the window and a movie. Along the way, our flight attendant, who was one of the best I've ever had the pleasure of meeting, offered a selection of snacks. We were both in the mood for some popcorn. After making our way through the Midwest, we were over Idaho. We flew right over Coeur d'Alene and then into Washington State, where we passed directly over the Spokane Airport before getting a spectacular view of the Grand Coulee Dam. But there's something absolutely stunning about the approach into Seattle, especially on this sunny, cloudless day. The mountains were at peak beauty. But this is nothing compared to the next leg. Keep watching so you don't miss even more views of Western Washington, British Columbia, and Alaska. 
Our approach also offered a great overview of SeaTac, where we'd have a layover of about two hours. Now, I absolutely love making these YouTube videos about transportation, but some of my favorite ones to make are Airports Revealed, in which we explore behind the scenes at airports all over the world. They're incredibly challenging to produce, but I'll be making one about Seattle in just a few weeks, so be sure to subscribe so you know when it goes live. Together, we'll explore this incredible airport in depth. Don't miss it. We've made great time across the country and arrived early. No good deed goes unpunished. We're um, sitting here on the ramp as we wait for our gate to be open. We're 45 minutes early. That means we gotta wait for the gate. But we were parked shortly after that. Now it was a hot day in Seattle, so we were asked to pull down our window shades to keep the airplane cooler. After that, we headed out into the terminal. Now our flight to Fairbanks is delayed, so we're gonna head up to the Alaska Airlines Lounge and hang out there for a while. The airport was absolutely packed on this summer day. And I'm so glad we got the chance to check out this lounge. Unlike most US airlines, Alaska offers entry as a benefit of being in first class. And this flagship lounge is enough reason on its own to book a first class ticket. But you can also get in as a priority pass member. For the most up-to-date information about entering, check out the Alaska Airlines website. I've been here before, and it's fantastic. Especially the views. The lounge is serving breakfast until 11, and uh, it's only 10.30, but we're feeling like it's about 2 o'clock, so it's lunchtime. Uh, so we're headed somewhere to find a bite to eat. So we uh, stopped for some sushi, and uh, turns out our flight is now back on time. So that's a good lesson, I think, uh, for travelers. Even if you're told there's a delay, there's a chance your flight's gonna be back on time. So just stay close to the gate and keep an eye on it. Even if you're delayed, you may not be. After that, we made our way through the massive crowds to our nearby gate. And we hopped on board our flight to Fairbanks, which did end up being delayed after all. Kudos to Alaska for communicating with us via their app, but it, it was very confusing. It's almost like the airline couldn't make up their mind what to do about their flight. In the end, I just wish they'd communicate the reason why there was confusion. When airlines give passengers the reason for a delay, they're a lot more understanding. Now, I think United Airlines does a great job of this. The cabin was nearly identical to our last flight, but we chose to sit on the other side of the plane for this trip to maximize views. I think you'll be pleased with our choice. I know we were. Seat's familiar, so let's just get up in the air. It was nice of the previous passenger to lower the window shades, but I was eager to look out. Three hours and six minutes in route, so we'll be able to make up a little bit of time. Weather showing uh, some sky clouds, temperature about 72 degrees. We'll keep you updated if anything changes. Once again, welcome aboard. Alaska Airlines has some of the coolest special liveries of any U.S. airline, and I think my favorite may be the Salmon 30 Salmon, which celebrates Alaska seafood. This plane was parked at my home airport, GSO, for far too long. It was great to see it out here in the wild. We get to fly on another of Alaska's special liveried planes during one leg of this wilderness to Waikiki adventure, so be sure to stay tuned to see that. And a huge shout out to all the ramp workers making this industry run, particularly on a hot day like this one. It was 100 degrees out there. This leg would be three hours and six minutes, and we'd cruise at 36,000 feet over some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world, along a path of 1,500 miles. Despite our delay, we were on the runway and airborne shortly after pushing back from the gate. I know I'm tempting fate, and I've said it before, but I'm yet to encounter Seattle's famous rain. The departure was even better than our approach into SeaTac. On this flight, I watched the 1999 mockumentary Drop Dead Gorgeous with a gin and tonic and enjoyed more spectacular Pacific Northwest views. Meals are offered by Alaska Airlines on most Boeing and Airbus flights over 670 miles. This flight qualified, so we pre-ordered using the app. 
This time, we both made the same choice. Second lunch came in the form of marinated beef salads, which were truly delicious. Our flight attendant also brought warm chocolate chip cookies. We've been itching to travel, as we often are, and Alaska seemed like an appealing place to stretch our legs. And we thought flying with Alaska to Alaska was a great way to start. And I'd say, based on our experiences today, we were right. There's a reason Alaska Airlines earned the somewhat facetious designation of 2020's Jeb Score award-winning domestic U.S. First Class Airline of the Year. It's great. But let's run the numbers on these flights. It's time for the subjective Jeb Score. The lounge in Seattle may just be the best one in the United States. It's five stars out of five all day long. The food on board was interesting and flavorful. Now, I have no idea why RDU is not considered a transcon worthy of a hot meal, but my salmon was good. The salad on our second leg was really tasty as well. This is four-star food. The seats are fine for a domestic daytime flight, but I'm not sure how well rested I'd be after a red eye here. These are pretty average US domestic first class seats, which mean three stars. The in-flight entertainment is smooth and full of options. If it were located in the seat back, it would be industry leading. I understand the airline's choice not to do that. It's cheaper and saves fuel, especially since most passengers travel with their own devices these days but I really wish they'd kept Virgin America's seatback screens. All that being said, this is four stars. But above all, what really shines for Alaska Airlines are its employees. The flight attendants we encountered were nothing short of excellent. And that's not a word I use lightly. But it even extends outside the cabin. Unlike some other US airlines, every Alaska Airlines employee we met was eager to engage with us and excited to count us as customers. The service on board these flights was every bit of five stars. So that leaves Alaska Airlines with 21 out of a possible 25 stars. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode in this truly remarkable journey from the wilderness to Waikiki. Between now and the next time, see in the sky. <laughs> <laughs>